Hello everyone, my name is Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and I can honestly say that I feel a little bit like I'm repeating myself. Um, as you may or may not know, recently uh, we've been doing a lot of videos involving uh, the new third generation um, Intel processors and the relevant boards that are coming out for them. So obviously we're talking Ivy Bridge and we are talking Z77, B75 and the other major chipsets that are coming out. And I say that I feel like I'm repeating myself purely because video after video after video, article after article after article, and um, it's been the same sort of process. We've obviously looked at uh, a particular motherboard, looked at the packaging, looked at the board, and given you a general sort of overview. And whilst it's all well and good, you know, it's, uh, it's good for us, we get to see the new technology before anyone else, and obviously it's good for you guys because we get to show that uh, new technology to you, to a certain degree, without um, obviously looking at benchmarks, figures, performance. Obviously we've got all that uh, under wraps on our testing over there, but uh, we're not allowed to show it to you uh, until certain dates uh, allow us to from Intel. Now, it has been all well and good looking at sort of you know a B seventy five motherboard, a Z seventy seven sort of basic motherboard uh, from Gigabyte, also one from uh, ECS, which is a little bit more higher end. But for us, uh, me personally, and some of the other guys who work at eTechnics, we are enthusiasts, and because of that, we want to be looking at the enthusiast boards now. Um, that obviously means to us uh, the major brands in the market. So we'd be looking at uh, ASUS, we'd be looking at Gigabyte, uh, ASRock, MSI, uh, these sort of four main companies, and obviously their high-end boards. That's what really excites us. And today we're sort of verging on that sort of area because we've actually got the Gigabyte Z77X UD5H. Now, this board is actually one of the top Z77 boards that's going to be coming out only uh, boards really above this is going to be G1 Sniper 3 and also the Micro ATX version which we will be getting to you very very soon uh, but we wanted to get this out of the way because this is going to be a board that's really going to um, sort of appeal to a lot of uh, mainstream enthusiast users obviously it's not aimed at the gaming market like the G1 Sniper is but it's still going to have great functionality if you've ever had a UD5 or even a UD7 um, but by the looks of things at the launch they're not going to be doing a UD7 model maybe it might come at a later date but um, it's literally going to be this and then the next step up is your G1 um, Sniper series so with this it is going to have uh, obviously everything that we've seen on UD5s before it's going to be feature rich it's going to have uh, potentially uh, fantastic overclocking options and things like that and should potentially I have to say the word potentially because I can't sort of give too much away but potentially it could be um, a fantastic board and obviously depending on the price it could be uh, a real sort of uh, good board in the retail market so what we're going to do is just like always we're going to sort of bring you in a little bit closer have a look at the box some of the features that are listed on the box on the front the back and so forth unbox it, show you exactly what comes included and then what we do is we bring you even closer in and have a look at the motherboard itself um, because I can tell you now this board is completely packed with features um, and it's a really really exciting time for us to start getting these higher end boards um, not just from Gigabyte for, but from some of the other brands as well um, so hopefully you guys enjoy this uh, whilst we unbox and take a sort of first hand uh, look and a preview on the Gigabyte Z77X UD5H. So guys, um, this is our first hand sort of preview on the Gigabyte Z77X UD5H. Now, Gigabyte have got so many different um, models coming out under the Z77, B75 um, and all the other different chipsets that are coming out. They've got so many different models under this branding, so um, just really a little bit. Z77X, um, consider it I guess a bit like Extreme. These are the higher end motherboards and a UD5H, this is pretty much the highest board you're going to find um, for Z77 at launch apart from obviously going to the uh, G1 Sniper 3 um, but yeah this is pretty much going to be your top sort of mainstream enthusiast board without going into that sort of uh, gaming uh, enthusiast market with the G1 Sniper series so straight away from the box we can see that it's got that whole sort of feel that we'd expect on uh, a sort of mainstream uh, board unlock performance with the Intel k -SKU CPUs um, and some of the main features that are listed on here is obviously the 3D power all digital ending, uh, engine patent pending and also the 3D BIOS with a dual UFE BIOS um, if you haven't seen this 
be sure to check around on YouTube and um, some sites out there because they have got uh, lots of information on the 3D BIOS and it is a really, really nice feature from what we've seen so far. Um, support for Intel Core i7. Uh, Intel chipset is the Z77 chipset. It's designed for PCI Express Gen 3. Has an mSATA connector on board, which Gigabyte have really been implementing into a lot of their boards as of late with this mSATA connector. They believe it's the way forward and uh, I agree with them. NVIDIA SLI ready and it has also got the ultra durable 4 protection which is your high temperature prote uh, protection, humidity protection, electrostatic protection and power failure protection. Uses 2 times copper PCB and also a new glass fabric PCB as well which just helps with things like the humidity protection. Turning the box over, uh, as always we get so much information on the back it's unreal so more information on the 3d power all digital engine and how it's delivered to the cpu the intel hd graphics the memory and the vtt which are your four main power zones and um, gives a little bit of information on the power engine we also get more information once again on the ultra durable 4 technology Ver2 mvp is on here so you can utilize both your discrete graphics and your igpu part of your uh, intel hd graphics on the processor we get a first view of what the board looks like and straight away we can see quite stylish with a black and blue design. Some of the main features listed is obviously the 3D BIOS again and it does give you two screenshots, one showing the 3D mode and then one showing the advanced mode. Uh, more information once again on Ultra Durable 4, this is a really big push for them because it shows that their motherboards are made to last, they're stable and reliable and just gives a few little charts and uh, demographic diagrams and things like that on what's actually going on. Full specifications are listed down here, supporting 2nd and 3rd gen Intel Core i7 processors, obviously Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge, uh, Intel Z77, PCI Express 3.0, USB 3.0 and much, much more. Now, moving back over to here, some of the features are listed, including the mSATA connector, which they show you is up here. We also have Intel Smart Response Technology, which is four times faster than using just a conventional hard drive on its own by utilizing a hard drive and an SSD together um, for SSD caching. Um, and this gives performance improvements of up to 60% and four times faster than hard drive only systems. Also down here we can see that it's got Creative Sound Blaster X5 MB2 Audio and we can also see that it's got Gigabyte Dual LAN as well and some of the other main features are listed here including DirectX 11 support, HDMI, DVI on off charge, 333 onboard acceleration and much more. So let's get straight into it and see what's going on inside the box. Straight away I can tell you the box itself is quite heavy so uh, we're expecting a lot of goodies to be included with this one. So opening things up, we can see we get a normal sort of white box inside another white box, and this reveals the motherboard. Before we actually start looking at that, I'm going to move it to one side so we can have a look at some of the other things that come included. So, as per usual, we get a user's manual, and also inside here is our uh, Intel 7 Series Utility DVD. We also get a um, French manual, um, for some reason they always include this, a French manual a multilingual installation guidebook and a nice Gigabyte branded uh, case based sticker. SATA cable wise you can see that we've got two black SATA cables and um, one of them being right angled and then we've also got two blue SATA cables once again one of them being right angled. We also get a uh, SLI bridge if you want to use uh, multiple graphics cards a rear I.O. panel, and because this isn't really a budget board as such, um, it is you know your mainstream sort of enthusiast board, um, it's a little bit nicer with a black um, colouring on there and everything's colour coded so you can see how many USB 3s we've got, DVI and things like that. And then also included is a front panel bay connector with two further USB 3.0 ports on it and this comes with all of the relevant mounting screws as well and a native USB 3.0 header which tells us straight away that this board is going to have USB 3.0 native on it. So what we're going to do is just move uh, this whole box and all the accessories out of the way and then we can start having a look at the Z77X UD5H. So guys, this is our first sort of hands-on look at the Gigabyte GA Z77X UD5H. Um, straight away we did say that the box was very heavy and we assumed that would be because of accessories but it's actually the board, this thing is quite heavy and that's down to the large heat sinks on here which we will talk about. Straight away ATX form factor, black PCB with these nice blue uh, and black accented uh, components on here. Now starting with the CPU socket area you can see that we've got a standard socket 1155 socket. Uh, this supports Sandy Bridge as well as the new third generation Intel Ivy Bridge processors. 
Um, around the CPU socket area there is quite a lot of room so you can fit large CPU coolers all in one water cooled uh, unit shouldn't have any problem either. Um, the heat sinks are up here are completely passive we've got one up here which leads down a flat heat pipe to this other large one over here which then leads down here into this large gigabyte branded sort of cosmic blue coloured um, heat sink which covers over the Z77 chipset. Now back at the CPU socket area we can see that these obviously help cool the components around the socket, VRM phase, um, capacitors, that kind of thing. Moving over to the memory we can see that we've got four DDR3 DIMM slots. <clears throat> these support up to 32 gig of DDR3, uh, 1066, 1300 and 1600. But Gigabyte do say that you need an Intel Ivy Bridge processor to utilise the 1600 speeds. Though as we know, we can overclock so we can get to them speeds and beyond anyway. Whilst we're over in this area, you can see a few sort of fan headers, but we can also see a CMOS reset button, a standard reset button, a big red power button, debug LED. Talking about power now, we can see that we've got a standard 24-pin ATX power connector here. And then just over where you'd normally expect it at the back is an 8-pin power connector just by another system fan header. Keeping with the whole power thing, we can see that we've got another one here which is actually a SATA power connector, but it's nothing to do with SATA. It actually provides extra power to your PCI Express and, and PCI expansion lanes if you're utilising more than one graphics card. So if you're using NVIDIA SLI or AMD Crossfire, not ATI Crossfire as is branded on the board and every other board that we've seen lately, if you're using two cards, uh, or more then you will want to obviously plug in this power connector just to give that extra bit of stability. Now taking a look at the SATA ports, first thing you'll notice is this sticker on top which tells us that SATA 2 port 5 will be disabled when MSATA slot is in use and there is an MSATA slot just up here and this is for use with the Intel Smart Response technology so SSD caching ready to, to give that extra sort of performance boost um, over a normal mechanical hard drive. Moving back to the SATA ports, we can see that we've got two grey ports here, but we've also got another one down here. Now these are branded as G SATA, and what G SATA is is they run off the Marvel um, controller, uh, the Marvel 88SE 9172, and these run at SATA 6G uh, or 6 gig per second speeds. Moving back to the main sort of block, we can see that we've got two white ports which run at once again SATA 6 gig per second, but these are actually run off the Intel Z77 chipset. And then lastly, the four black ports are SATA 3 gig per second, and these, once again, run off the Intel Z77 chipset. There's another system fan header down here, and then moving over towards the front panel connectors, we've got two USB 3.0 ports over here, but we've also got another one just up here. So obviously the bundled accessory for front panel USB 3.0 connectors um, will only actually utilise one of them, so you can fit another four devices plus all the USB 3.0 ports that are on the rear of the board, which we will talk about as well. We've got a little switch here just for changing your BIOS versions between BIOS version 1 and 3. I'm not quite sure where 2 is, but 1 and 3. And once you've done so, we can see the two BIOS chips up here have actually got corresponding LEDs. So your M BIOS is obviously your main BIOS, and your B BIOS is your backup BIOS. So uh, a nice little handy feature there. Moving back down, we've got our front panel connectors. So this is your uh, LEDs, switches, uh, speaker, that kind of thing. Another system fan header, so plenty of cooling uh, support on this board. Two USB 2.0 ports, TPM connector, Firewire, not quite sure why it's on there. I hate Firewire, it's not used as much as uh, it used to be, so I, I do think it's a bit of a redundant feature, but obviously uh, Gigabyte think that it's still needed. Uh, we also have SP diff and then front panel audio as well. Now, taking a look at the expansion lanes, um, between it we can see we've got the CMOS uh, battery. But this is where things start to get interesting because we have quite a nice variety. We've got three PCI Express X1 slots. We've got a PCI Express X16 slot up here which runs at X16 speeds. An X16 slot which runs at X8 speeds. Legacy PCI. And then another X16 slot which only runs at X4 speeds. But as the sticker says, this PCIe X4 slot requires an Ivy Bridge 3rd gen CPU. So to utilise that port you do need Ivy Bridge. And these are of course PCI Express Gen 3. So uh, nice little bits of functionality and as I said if you do want to run Crossfire if you want to utilize that last port or SLI then you're going to need Ivy Bridge and you're also going to need to plug in this power connector that's down there to give you that extra stability uh, for the power. Lastly looking at the rear of the board with the IO panel we can see things look a little bit different to what we'd normally expect. Normally we'd expect some USB and some PS2 connectors over here but there's nothing. Straight away they jump straight in and give you VGA and DVI. 
um, and with this um, it has also got the Virtu Lucid technology as well. Now taking these little plastic covers out we can also see that we've got uh, HDMI up here and a full size display port down here as well so plenty of options for your uh, various different displays. Now this has got the Lucid Virtu MVP technology which means that you can utilize the iGPU part of the processor with a discrete graphics card to give you the best performance um, which you know reduces things like tearing and uh, utilizes the processor when it needs to and utilizes the discrete graphics card when it needs to and now it doesn't matter if you plug into one of these or the connector that's actually on a graphics card in here as well. We've also got optical SB diff up here two USB 2.0 ports, Firewire, eSATA, four lots of USB 3.0 ports. Um, we've got dual LAN on here as well. Now the LAN, one of them is through uh, a chip called Atheros, and the other one is an Intel um, gigabit LAN. They're both gigabit, um, and uh, yeah, it's just handy to obviously have two ports in this day and age. And then over here, we've got our audio as well. Um, so plenty of features on the back of the board, and uh, plenty of features on the board in general. And uh, I'm actually really excited because this is probably the most feature-rich board that we've looked at out of the Z77 boards that we've been looking at recently. So this was a, a first-hand sort of look at the Gigabyte GA Z77X UD5H motherboard.